hey, so um, the the queen died. I, I know I'm pretty late to the whole period of mourning, but as a citizen of the Commonwealth, I feel that it is my civic and sacred duty to cover this monumental occasion with the respect that it deserves. Yeah, I don't really think the Queen was a good person, and I especially don't think that the family that she stood for was good either. And I also don't think that dying should make you immune to genuine criticism. This doesn't mean that you can't be sad, but it also doesn't mean that you can't make jokes about it. It's just a bit more complicated than that. It, it really depends on what you're saying and how you're saying it. Today we're going to explore the Queen Ugh. and uh, what she stood for, as well as what she stood for, stood for. We'll also have a bit of a look at the way that the internet responded to what happened to the Queen. She died, by the way, in case you didn't get it. We'll also have a look-see into the general ways that the internet reacts to the deaths of celebrities. And then we'll also see how the inescapable void of politics will always claim us. Also, why do they make their cops aware this shit? That's like embarrassing enough being a cop. Why are they doing this to them? You already know who the Queen is. She's plastered everywhere in the UK. She's all they talk about. So clearly, all of us should know pretty well the values that she espoused and really what it is that she did. She, of course, wouldn't happen to be shrouded in media-established mystery, that heavily nepotistic, royalty-loving class of journalists reporting on only what is the best look for old Lizzie, would she? The, the answer is yes, if you uh, didn't catch that. Have you ever seen the British tabloids? They're kind of insane. They, they're called Meghan Markle Exotic at one point. Specifically, it's some woman called Rachel Johnson called Meghan Markle Exotic. Why does she sound significant? Oh, oh, that's Boris Johnson's sister? She was 50 when she wrote what well, might be the worst article ever written, by the way, truly an industry of meritocracy. Because of this, a lot of people consider the Queen as purely a figurehead, as if there is nothing that she's ever done, but she was certainly doing things. Things that may not have been nearly as covered by the mainstream media, but, uh, really fucking should have? Like, like they're infinitely more newsworthy than some of the drivel thrown out by the British media. If you're like me, you were probably under the impression that the Queen really actually just did nothing. Maybe had to stamp a couple laws, and while she could veto them, she never would, because then the Parliament would just, like, boot her out. It turns out, while more than 1,000 bills were given her royal stamp of approval, which is in of itself a stupid system, she had also been secretly altering quite a few laws throughout her reign. Here, it seems that she specifically lobbied a law in order to hide the true amount of her wealth from the British public. And here's one where she made herself exempt from laws designed to stop outwardly racist exclusions and applications back in the 60s. While they do hire ethnic minorities now, a crazy sentence, the exemption from this law still stands. This means that no matter what, minorities cannot complain to the courts if they believe that they've been discriminated against. Ooh, ooh, but it's it's fine guys, uh, Buckingham Palace says that they have their own process for discrimination that they uh, won't tell us about. And considering how they treated the first mixed race member of the royal family, yeah, great job by the way guys, I can't imagine it's especially thorough. Uh, for legal reasons, um, I am not directly accusing the Queen of uh, being being racist. Uh, please don't send the guys with the, the funny hats to my door. I don't know the extent of their powers, and I am not confident that I could beat any of them in a fight. So, while the Queen wasn't busy baking legally excused racism into her institution, and also just being entirely legally immune for some reason, she was vetting Scottish laws in order to make sure they didn't make her deal with horrid things like pollution or animal health in her estates throughout Scotland. She also directly contributed to her son, Prince Andrew, the pedophile's sexual case, who is currently trying to make an epic comeback with the media. The royal family itself is estimated to be worth about 28 billion pounds, which sounds pretty heavy. <laughs> uh, with the majority of that being thanks to owning 20 billion pounds of real estate within London. That's right. She's also one of the largest landlords in London. Imagine trying to tell the Queen that you need a shower repair. She'll probably like lobby the government and then you'll become illegal or something. Or like the 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 funny um the funny the funny police guys in hats. <laughs> oh, and all those those uh, fun little stones she's got hanging around. About three to five billion. And uh, you might be thinking, well, uh, those are the property of generations of a royal family. Uh, of course they have them. Think about it. Do you, do you really think the little rock of the UK has all these like brilliant jewels on it? Of course not. A vast majority of the royal jewelry collection is the result of pillaging and ransacking of other nations as they are, well, 
colonized them. British museums are full of stolen relics of other nations, and the Queen's collection is no different. The royal family itself, first tax pays about a hundred million pounds per year from the sovereign crown, which is actually only 25% of what the family gives back to the taxpayers from the income, which is derived from just being landlords, which is a little ironic. The royal family makes their money through land ownership, which is basically just doing nothing. It's not like that land just disappears without them there to reside over it. The royal family also bills the taxpayer security costs, which amount to um, an undisclosed amount. Huh? You, you know, just you're gonna give the bill to the people playing? Like, sounds like a sounds like a system immune to exploitation. The royal family itself is pretty synonymous with the whole slavery and colonial stuff. They'd spent a lot of time and effort committing genocide and stealing everything from just so many, so many cultures. The royal family has directly attacked so many different nations and even the people that they put there ended up hating the monarchy in almost every single case. It's no surprise that a lot of people don't seem so sad over her death. A common argument against this stuff affecting how we should view the queen is that she didn't do any of it herself. You know, she just did the noble act of pulling the knives out of some of the country's backs. Obviously, that is already an incredibly charitable reading of her ruling, but even if that was true, it does not ignore the fact that her entire life was sponsored by the history of racist colonial rule. Every day that she put on a big hat with a bunch of stones plunged from India or collected some money from lands inherited from her ancestors, she directly profited off of a system that only existed by stealing from indigenous cultures. She would have just been a normal old lady. It's not like she was giving the shit they stole back. She literally, she stopped the police from doing that. At the end of the day, the idea that an entirely unelected family can affect the laws of a nation or also just getting free money from them is just, it's just so archaic and stupid. It's the, like the epitome of a leeching. But that's enough of exhaustively insulting the Queen's legacy. Anyone can search that stuff up and a lot of it's been known for years. And I want to talk more about the response that people had to her death and the response to that response. In turn, creating a response to that response So when the Queen died, there was understandably a lot of talk over about it. I mean, for almost everyone, she was the only Queen they'd ever known. She ruled for like 70 years. I am sure it's not older than that. You had news articles talking about how sad it was and how great she was, and you had tweets talking about, well, everything. If you're watching this, there's a good chance you were on my side of Twitter, and uh, there was a lot going on over there when Lizzie died. It felt like every tweet, with even the slightest bit of comedic merit, would get like a hundred thousand likes and I would admit there was certainly a lot of actually funny tweets but some of them were just not very funny. I don't know, it, it just feels eh. Like I dislike the Queen as much as anyone, you know if you're watching this video you would know. But um, at least just be funny about it. Also when I was researching to find tweets about this, I came across this Buzzfeed article where they just throw their fellow Buzzfeed friends tweet in along with all these other 100,000 likes tweets. Like you can get your friends some cloud and all, I don't care, it just looks so funny with it's like 300 likes. So yeah, some people made some funny tweets, other people made some unfunny tweets. There was also a lot of weird British people who were arguably too sad about the whole thing. Some football team that played the weekend after her death were dealt with in the strongest possible terms. Some guy got arrested for carrying eggs near Prince Andrew. That should be like a law that you should carry eggs near Prince Andrew. I feel like you should always be able to throw an egg at Prince Andrew. They also dressed up a Holocaust memorial into a Queen Elizabeth memorial. Stuff like this makes it not that surprising that a counterculture in the form of funny tweets would emerge. But what is slightly more complicated is the counter counterculture that emerged. Unsurprisingly, a large group of reactionary right-wingers formed a bond with British royalists as they pushed back against all the mean, scary tweets. Town jesters like Ben Shapiro and Matt Walsh gushed about how great she was and disparaged the comments of detractors as simple ignorant anger. You may wonder why the right would be such a big fan of the monarchy when, you know, they love America and America is kind of like the opposite of the monarchy. Like, it's kind of like the one thing everyone in America agrees on being good that they got rid of. But, um, it's actually kind of simple. There is no greater an example of a rigid social hierarchy than that of a royal monarchy. It's like where the word came from. And if you're not aware, the preservation of hierarchy is a pretty right-wing ideal. So while the reaction from right-wing reactionaries was not surprising at all, I do think that the reaction from the largely unorganized political faction of young people that like funny jokes was pretty interesting. And at the end of the day, while 
old Liz was a bad person who did bad things and stood for bad things. She's still like a person. I'm sure some of the old bags of skin in that big house were genuinely mournful. I coat everything I say in a veneer of sarcasm and goofy jokes, but death is weird. While writing the script, a friend of mine died in a car crash. So you're not allowed to complain about me taking more than a month to make this. I also like painted these walls. It took a while. It's a it's a strange feeling, knowing that you'll never see that person again, and sometimes there's things you never got to tell them. So using the powers of empathy, I genuinely do feel sorry for those that knew her and were emotionally affected by her passing. I'd imagine King Charles probably feels something about seeing so many people clown on his recently departed mother. But saying that, it's kind of a part of the job description for her. Like, by being a famous figure, you are basically trading your privacy for amounts of money that most people will never achieve in their lifetime. I'm not saying that you deserve paparazzi at your door every day, but things like your death, they're gonna be a little publicized, and people are allowed to talk about what they want to talk about. And I understand that the Queen did not really choose to be the Queen, and even if she had abdicated, she would have still been in the public eye because the British media is just full of insane people. But that kind of makes it worse. Like, Rowan Atkinson may make an unnecessarily large amount of money, but at least he's giving us Mr. Bean. The Queen just kind of existed and then gained all that she could ever need thanks to the blood that she shared. And it's not like she shied away from all the Queen stuff. You watch the video and if you skipped ahead, well, welcome to the world of consequences. The thing is, most of the time when a celebrity dies, they get almost only positive messages from the world. You have to be really disliked to get the treatment that Lizzie got. What I'm trying to get across is that while you shouldn't throw eggs at the royal family right after the Queen died, okay, maybe just at Prince Andrew, you can make a funny joke on Twitter. Just make it funny. If I die at like 22, you can make fun of me all you want. But it has to be like actually funny. And of course, if you feel that the Queen had some positive significance in your life somehow, you're obviously allowed to be saddened by her death. Death does not absolve anyone of anything. It's like the one thing we all do. Judge someone by what they did throughout their life. And at the end of the day, just be nice to people who deserve it. See ya.